uh, yeah, get started. So, Janet, over to you and uh, welcome for week number five. Uh, right, thank you. Another uh, part of the, the series and uh, I know everyone's motivated and looking forward to hearing what you, you have to say. That's great. Well, welcome everybody. And uh, it's so great to see so many people who have been following, you know, every week. And, uh, and I hope you've really got a lot from this and have been learning these principles where, you know, you can use them for all of your life. So, you know, keep, keep on doing that. And uh, so today we're going to be talking about the last three principles of Napoleon Hill's system. So let me just share my screen. <clears throat> okay, so just a recap again, I know, you know, there's a lot who have been following us every week and then there's a lot of people who have just joined us. So for those people who have just joined us, this is what we've been covering over the last few weeks, and we're now on week five. So today we're talking about uh, the subconscious mind, the brain, and the sixth sense. Next week, we're going to be talking about it's time to fly and to create your true wealth. So that is very exciting too. I love people who don't know who I am. I'm Janet Jones. I'm known as the happiness millionaire. I am a Napoleon Hill certified instructor. And I've spoken on the Napoleon Hill stage over in Malaysia. I've, as you can see on here, I've met Richard Branson and I've done lots of the motivational stuff from walking over hot coals, bending arrows in my neck and steel in my neck and all this kind of stuff. Just a I find those kind of things are really affirming for the strength of your uh, spirit as opposed to your character. I think when we can tap into the strength of our spirit, which this is what today's conversation is all about. And then, of course, there's my book, Happiness Millionaire, Positive Images for a Rich and Powerful Life. And that came about because people started asking where they could get my book as I was on the speaking circuit. So I decided it was possibly time to put everything I knew into that book and my personal journey also. So that is available on my website. And so all you need to do, if you would like to get this special offer for those, again, I know a lot of you have, and I'm sure you're really enjoying it. I do get emails. It's lovely to hear from you, to hear about, you know, how this is influencing you. Because quite often as an author, you just don't get that. You know, people read your book and once you've written it and put it out there, Unless people get in touch, you actually don't know the impact that it's having. So I do love to hear from you. Um, like I say, just go over to happinessmillionaire.com if you would like to get the £2 offer for the ebook. And just to kind of also introduce this here is there is my whole training course available, but you have to click separately to get that. One or two people have clicked at the same time thinking they're just getting the ebook, um, which is fine. But, you know, if you really want to get this training, then it, it is just so valuable. It's amazing. And once again, I hear a lot from people who have taken this course, um, you know, from this call, and the feedback has been absolutely fabulous. Because what we do in that course is go really deep on the principles that I've been sharing for these last five weeks. Uh, it is on offer until the 1st of May. And I've done that just specially for you guys. So do take a look at that as well. Let's just have a very quick recap of what we spoke about right from the beginning, because repetition, repetition, repetition is the way we learn. And when we learn, we change our behavior. So we'll just have a quick recap about that. We started off talking about being poor, and, but poor in our minds. So the poor stands for a poverty mindset, feeling overwhelmed and life getting off balance and then in time, if we stay on that trajectory of life and the way we think, it is a matter of time before there's regrets. Uh, regrets, they could be big regrets, they could be small regrets, but guaranteed, if your mind stays in that space, there's regrets. 
it might be that you go, oh, why did I spend all that time thinking like that? Regret. When you recognize it, that is when you can change your life to a rich life. So it allows you, that mindset actually allows you to make life changes and then focus on your relationships, your income, your confidence and your health. So we want to make that switch. And the way we do that is obviously learn new strategies and new principles to work our life around. Um, we spoke about thought and how thought is energetic. And if we imagine this, this energy coming off the mind, and we're going to really dive deep into how that connects us and shapes the lives that we have today. And then we spoke about how all thoughts create an image. A lot of people say, oh, but, you know, I'm not very visual. Well, everybody is visual. I'll share why in a moment. So every thought creates an image. The image, images, all images creates an emotion. What we see through our eyes is then interpreted by the brain and this creates an emotion. And it's this emotion that has us taking action. Everything you do comes from an emotion, big or small. And that action creates an experience. The experience is then fed back to the mind which then will help you guide through life, creating new thoughts and images. And the reason why that works is because you have a half a billion brain cells at the back of the brain. This area is known as the visual cortex. And what you see coming into your eyes, it goes to, you can just see the thalamus on there. And so it's the thalamus that's like a flag post. But what you see, it sends what you see to the visual cortex. The main aim for these last few weeks is to be continually seeing these images of the new principles that you're going to adopt in your life to continually see them over and over and over again and read the messages, keep looking at them and feed them into your subconscious mind, sorry, into your visual cortex. I'm, coming, I'm jumping ahead because we're talking about subconscious mind today uh, and this will come clear in a moment. So this is what we have been aiming to do all this time. We started off, now imagine that these principles are your cake. These are the recipe. And we started off with the thought print, the thought layer. And the thought layer is number one, your desire. I really wish I could do this with a chat because I would be testing you all right now. So be writing them down, see if you get them right. And number two, what's number two? Number two is faith and having faith and belief in yourself. And with those two principles, that increases the language that we use in our mind, which is auto-suggestion. Once again, if you go back to the, I think it was the first, no, the second week, we spoke a lot about that. And in my book, I dive deeper about auto-suggestion because it isn't just the language that's going on either. So now the second layer of the cake is the physical layer. And this is what we talked about last week. And the physical layer is where you, you're now starting to have to physically do something. So it wasn't last week, it was the week before. So you're now going out seeking specialized knowledge. Um, as we're in cash FX, then it's about learning more about cash FX. And also, I would say, learning about yourself and, you know, your self-esteem, your confidence and things like that. So lots of specialized knowledge. And then you would then use your imagination. So once you've gained that knowledge, use your imagination. And then from your imagination, you can put a plan together. But you can't have your desire and immediately put a plan together. Make sure you go through these steps, because if you do that, you've got things missing. Last week, we spoke about the action level. Yes, you have to get off your bottom and do something. And we started with decision, actually making a decision. And sometimes that's hard to do, but everything is a decision. So you make your decision Following these principles, you get to make them with confidence. Oh, 
I beg your pardon. <laughs> I can't get back. Uh oh, one moment. OK, and so then we're going to persist with that decision. And from that persistence, you start to look about the people who are close to you, um, who you can mastermind your desire with, not not the people you're connected as into, you know, the influence of the people around. I mean, consciously choosing somebody to mastermind with and maybe there are people either within your team or people from the whatsapp group that you really connect with then you could actually create a mastermind and it's that connection of like-minded people that then channels your deep inner energy and enthusiasm and that comes from your sexual energy which then gives us the sex transmutation principle and the idea is to tap into that energy of passion and enthusiasm and then transmute it to the desire that you've had right at the beginning of this um, system. So today we are going to talk about the icing on the cake, because you know what? Cake is delicious, but the icing just gives it that something extra. And that's what these next three principles do. They give your life that something extra. Most people don't actually go this far. So again, well done for being in here and coming this, uh, this distance with us. This is what I call the higher level thinking. And the principles we're going to talk about today are the subconscious mind, the brain principle, and sixth sense. So let's dive into those now. As I'm going through these images, I want you to really look at them and really take in the message. These are all very simple images, but they have very profound messages. So take a look at this and what you can do, again, this is what I do in my training, is we take the image and scribble around it of all the emotions and the thoughts that it brings up for you. Now, for people in the past, this image has brought calm and serenity because that's what's in a rich life. And when you have a rich life and you feel confident, you know, you're not up and down and panicking, you're feeling calm and serene. And this also is part of the subconscious mind. So all those other principles, you have been bringing them now into your subconscious mind. And that's starting to manifest itself as calm and Another really important part to understand of the subconscious mind. And if you've got a pen and paper, you know, jot this down. If you don't have a pen and paper and you have my book, then it's on page 218. The quickest way to get to it in the ebook is just tap onto the subconscious mind chapter and it will take you into that chapter and you'll be able to scroll to 218. Otherwise, you'll be there for a very long time trying to find page 218. But this is really, really powerful. And I wish everybody could get to know this. It would stop so many arguments or, you know, just nonsense that goes on. What we want to do is move from a, a space of ignorance to knowledge. You see, ignorance, if we run down this list, then... Um, Ignorance, this is based on a limited or incorrect information that's coming from past wounds or past views on life. And this creates worries and doubts. So imagine that this ignorance column here, this is the poor mindset. So this is what the ignorance is creating in the conscious mind. What that does is it then feeds that information into the subconscious mind. And the subconscious mind is then responding with fear. And it's dragging up those past painful experiences. Now, how might that play out in your cash FX business, for instance? It may be that in years gone by, somebody rejected you and it hurt. 
And so with that sat in your subconscious mind, then that will play itself out either in the fear of not wanting to contact certain people thinking maybe some way you think well actually they could reject me so I won't tell them or or they're better than me so I won't tell them all that is playing in the subconscious mind and what this fear generates as you see in this list here is jealousy anger that's lack of control the hatred insecurity which is what I was just talking about there and poverty thinking. If we stay in this, com in this column, poverty thinking will never leave you. And what that does is it creates this chemical effect in the body. All our thinking has a chemical reaction to the body, mind, body, spirit. And this is creating cortisol that is released and it's carried around the body in the form of adrenaline. I'm sure you've been in that position where you're feeling a little panicky and you can sense yourself shaking a little. And that's what's happening in the body. So it creates this behavior that really doesn't serve anybody. And what that does is it creates the negative states of stress, anxiety, dis-ease, depression, and ultimately death, uh, that is the absolute extreme. And for those of you who have read my book and you know of my past story, that's what happened to my dad, tragically. He stayed very firmly in that column. With awareness, we can change this. So use this image to become aware of this and change it. And you change that by gaining knowledge. So there's one really crucial question, and I hope that you'll write this one down uh, and use it, not just for cash effects, but with everything. What do I need to know? If something's going wrong and you're feeling anxious and stressed, take a breath, use the calmness of this image and simply say, what do I need to know? And what this does is it brings this new level of understanding. And that then goes into the subconscious and we find rational thoughts in our subconscious mind. We have to do this over and over again, though, because if we're changing our life, then we've had years of being in this ignorance column and of which most people are. Again, if you've read my book, I state the figure of 97 percent. So to move in, you'll find that there's a constant pull. So you'll regularly have to say, what do I need to know? What do I need to know? And then your subconscious then will pick this up and it will start to cultivate the faith that's inside of you, that's in, inside all of us. And then the fear will be compassionately turned into faith and understanding. What faith generates is gratitude, compassion, and this inner control of love and confidence, but most of all, a rich mindset. That's where you'll find a rich mindset. And that then has this beautiful chemical effect on the body, which is a dose of happiness. I'm going to tell you more in a moment, but that dose of happiness, it creates dopamine and oxytocin and serotonin and endorphins and all these are released around the body and they produce a state of happiness which then gives you well-being it makes you at ease at, with the most tragic situations you can become at ease and you find happiness in the strangest of places, you become more creative and ultimately you get to live better fully and with a growth um, kind of expansion to your life. So it's really, really powerful. Uh, and I urge you to take a look at that and really bring that into your consciousness. The next principle is the brain principle. Now, remember, these are now coming. They, they all stack on top of one another. For those of you who have your pack of cards, I know a few of you do, and hopefully you'll all get a pack when we tell you more about that later. Um, but 
the this is now the brain principle and what we're discovering as we stack them on top of one another so now we're, we're calming our subconscious mind we're feeling more confident it's now time to look at how our brain is connecting to all the brains around us because of social media we're now connected to far more brains that, that reach out across the globe. But I want you to become choosy about whose brains you're going to connect with. And again, take a really close look at this image because the uh, circuit board there is representing all that electrical thoughts and the filing system, et cetera, that is going on in the brain. And the hand represents that you are in control of this. And it's when we take that control, and I love how the eye, this is my daughter actually, so I'm really passionate about this, but I love how her eye is looking up because when we take control of this, we can look up and create that infinite imagination. So again, super powerful. Now it was Napoleon Hill with these other three guys, uh, Graham Bell and Dr. Elmer Gates. They were the first people that, well, I think that history knows of anyway, where they began to understand that the brain works as an antenna, that it is a, both a receptor and a transmitter. And so it's important to understand what you are transmitting from your brain, from your electrical energy, from your filing system. It's important to know what you are transmitting because that will then connect with a receiver and that receiver will transmit back to you. And this is why we need to look at the people who we are surrounding ourselves with. And this is why uh, I think, who is it? Was it Jim Rohn, maybe? I think it was Jim Rohn who said um, about the five people you are most connected to, that that represents your wealth. Now, I think that's wealth both in your bank account and your emotional health, um, wealth too. So take a look at the five. Um, again, in my training program, we dive much deeper and there are exercises, there's exercises in the book to help you to dig deep on this as well. Super important. And um, oh, there you go, the quotes at the bottom. So that, have I just gone backwards? I seem to have gone backwards. So again, you can look at this image and start to jot down everything that it means to you. I hope you've been doing this as we go, because I do like to do a questions and answers in a moment. So just have a think what this means to you and how it can impact your life now as you move forward, now that you've been learning this. And remember, this is the top of the cake. This, most people don't get up here. They don't even recognize the importance of the people they're surrounding themselves with and just keep tripping and falling and creating more of the same because they're also not saying, what do I need to know? So it's great that you're in here and that's just what you're doing. So let's take a look at the dose of happiness. Again, really important to know. So the D is for dopamine and you get dopamine from reward, which is why we do goals, uh, write shopping lists and things like that. And those little ticks, you'll notice at the beginning of my training, I have my list and I put a green tick for each one that we've done because that's a sense of achievement and that creates dopamine in the body. And then you have oxytocin. Oxytocin is the love chemical. And you get that from being kind and loving to people, loving to pets. And, uh, you know, the reason why people have cats and dogs, as you stroke them, you are generating oxytocin in the system. And, uh, and that brings joy. You also get serotonin. Now, serotonin is a funny one because it, it's the one linked, well, through the writings that we have on depression so far, it's about serotonin in the brain, but actually the most of our serotonin is created in the gut. 
a whole different subject, but it's well worth looking into. Um, but we get most of our serotonin from our gut. So it's really important, the kind of food that you eat, if you want to generate a higher level of happiness. And I don't mean that bubbly, woohoo kind of happiness. I mean that gentle, joyful, passionate kind of happiness that, that is just ever present. And then you have endorphins and endorphins comes from exercise. So taking walks, going running and most wonderful of all, eating dark chocolate. I like that one. And that will all give you a sense of happiness. These are the top three, 3% uh, 3 of brain stimulants. Sex, again, if you go back to the sex transmutation and we talk that creates this whole chemistry. So that triggers the right chemistry in the brain and you feel really powerful. And then water, you know, we are 70% water, maybe more depending on which uh, web page you're reading, uh, who's selling water. And so, but that is also really good for the brain. A dehydrated brain can take you to the poor mindset. So do bear that in mind. And again, the nutritional diet, going back to understanding that the serotonin is created in the gut. Look after your gut and it'll look after your brain and then take exercise. Remember those endorphins. Again, this is showing the back of the cards. On these cards, you'll see again that they're all numbered but you get to write your personal thoughts on the back of these cards, which means I'm super motivating because it's about motivating you. It's not about what other people are doing for their motivation. We want you to be your kind of motivation. It's not about, you know, following someone else's dream. It's about following yours. So I hope that you do those kind of things. And then finally, this again, now we're going to that really, really high sense of, uh, of thinking. And this is the sixth sense. It's the intuition. Napoleon Hill calls this the doorway to the temple of wisdom. Um, absolutely correct. You can't be wise without, or super wise, I suppose, without truly understanding the sixth sense and the power that it has. Napoleon Hill calls this the apex of the philosophy. He says it can, it should say it can't actually. Oh no, I'm reading it completely wrong. It says it can be assimilated, understood and applied only by first mastering the previous 12 principles. So once again, you can't get to the sixth sense and the, and the temple of wisdom if all you're doing is going, my desire, this is what I feel passionate about, and dive straight in, master those principles, and you will get to this sixth sense, and you'll be able to use the elevation of your intuition, and your thoughts will come from here rather than up here. And so all this, this electrical kind of craziness that's going on that, that can pull you back to the poor mindset. When you're doing this and you're living from here, there is no poor mindset because you're living from here and you got this, you can do this. By now you're working with a higher power. So this is the image for the sixth sense. And I'll just tell you a very quick story. I don't know, oh, we're doing okay. Um, the story be behind this image is very sixth sense actually. And I live in the Pennines in Yorkshire and I was driving home um, from, I'd been out somewhere. I was driving home. I was coming down the, the top of the road at one of the hills near me. And I look up at the sky and I see it just like this. And the sixth sense image, it was the last one for me to create. And the one I was struggling with the most, which I guess the story behind that is I needed all those other principles. And so I'm driving along, I see the sky and I'm like, oh my God, that is the perfect thing. But I didn't have my camera with me. So I, I raced home, I grabbed my camera, time and tide waits for no man. But when I got back, it was as though somebody had paused the sky where it looked exactly the same. So I got, my, I got my camera out, I take a few of the sky, 
And then uh, a friend of mine, her daughter, she's a ballerina. And I asked her if she would dress as an angel for me. And the whole thing just worked out perfectly. It was the most calming image that I created out of all of them. It was easy and it, were, and it had a flow to it. And I love this because it looks like she's walking on the sky and that whole high level again I call this high level thinking and it and it is it's that high intuitive level and the image has a very highness to it what you'll also notice if you look at the entire system I pulled the cards out here that the desire and the sixth sense both have blue sky and the blue sky is infinite there's no there's no ceiling on any of this they're both infinite and so with all the principles in between that's what you can be that's what we can all be so again scribble notes as to what this image i'll just give you a moment to look at it actually and just scribble some notes as to what this image means to you Okay, that actually concludes all the principles and um, do connect with me. I love hearing from you guys. And what we'll do next week is look at how we can implement all of this in your life. So if you would like to contact me this week and just say, you know, where you're at and how this has helped you, where you want to go, the, those kind of things, then next week I can help you with stuff like that. So just ping an email to info at happinessmillionaire.com. I will get them. I'll reply back to you. And let's see next week that we can really get some momentum in this because that's what we're here for. So now the other thing that I just want to share with you, like Brian was saying, he's got 100 packs of these. It's the first hundred people. We were linking this to goals, but after we had brainstormed, then we realized that that would be kind of a logistics nightmare. So um, do go ahead and work on your plans. Next week, Brian is going to do a little planning section as well. So start to dive into what your plans are and how you want to pull all of this together. But to get one of these packs, if you could just send £2.50 for the postage and packing for Brian, then just go to his PayPal account, which is to his email address, which is brianchittick7 at gmail.com. And it's as simple as that. If you could just do that, then Brian can get these sent out to you. And, and it is just a contribution to the postage. The, these are free. They're normally... 15 pounds on Amazon is what they sell for. So it's really worth having. And if you've really enjoyed these last few weeks, that is going to be so valuable to you. So I'm going to open this up now for questions and answers and some chat and, uh, and let's see what we can do. So I'm going to stop sharing. Brilliant. Um Fabulous, Shannon. Yeah, uh, I mean, really, really powerful stuff. And I know that this is new to a lot of people here, but, it, you know, this is what the whole team is about. It's about expanding and growing uh, ourselves. And uh, uh, just on the PayPal thing, by the way, please put it in that it's friends and family. I forgot um, that. I, I bought the packs to give away purposely, uh, but obviously also include, send me the details with your uh, name, Full name and address, please, so that I can get those sent off and uh, we get them sent out as quick as possible. Yeah, excellent. And um, so do we have questions then from today's session or any questions, actually? Um, just let me know what you want to talk about. Yeah. First of Hi, all, Janet. Janet. Right. I, Go sorry, Brian. I'll come one Hi. moment, Rocky. Hey, Janet. On page... 217 in the existing oh. reality. Just one, moment, just one moment, one moment. It's a terrible sound. That's a terrible, that's a very existing reality sound. 
Um, <laughs> who's speaking? It's Derek. It's Derek, it's right? Derek. Yeah, hi, Derek. Yeah, we've spoken before. What's happening with your sound, I wonder? I'm not sure here. The audio's got not 100% clear. I'm not sure. Okay, okay. can I Is suggest something? Better? Could Not you, really. Can you put a message in the chat, uh, Derek, the chat if your sound isn't good at all? Okay, I'll do that. <laughs> okay, thanks, Derek. We'll look out for it and make sure we answer that. Great. Uh, sorry, Rocky. Unmute yourself, Rocky. I just Great. want to say thanks again. It's the last five weeks. I'm definitely dreading next week and can enjoy it, but I'm like, ah. Where are we going? But we got the Telegram group. We've met each other and we work together anyway. So I have faith that this is all going to be beautiful more than it started. Uh, what's funny, um, when you showed the picture, I, I muted everything and just started writing what I felt. The last one with the angel and the, the few thoughts. And it's really cool because I did this last time watching the uh, replays. And I suggest everyone does it because it's about where your mind or your heart is at the time you're visualizing or looking at these images comes different messages. And, and with that, to write it down, I, I wrote down with the angel that it was limitless. It was blue sky infinity. And then I felt higher powers, uh, innocence and purity, also pure like love. And that it was Mother, Ner Mother Earth and the, the beauty of nature. But it was when I turned things on and you started explaining it, I got like goosebumps because I was like, hey, I got that right away. Yeah. So it was my feeling as well. One question I have, uh, I've got a lot of, uh, a handful of good uh, soldiers in the team are really doing their best and I'm trying to relay the information to them. They're not able to get on these calls, but I can see if we can get them into the program anyway uh, to learn. But what I noticed this last couple of weeks, I've got a lot of people that are struggling, people that have lost their jobs, people that are in and out of the hospital. Uh, I just went with a walk with a gentleman this morning. He's 60 and he's um, he's not able to pay anything. He doesn't get unemployment. He's um, what do we call it? Social help. They, they have to pay all his bills. And he's 60. He's like, I said, what's your plan? And he said, I'm looking to go six feet under. I was like, dude, no. You're 60. Yeah, but he's, no. he's in good spirit and stuff. I said, no, you have to make a plan. And I asked myself, what's with me that I want to help all these people that I know I gained a lot of knowledge since I've met Brian, uh, Rubina, and of course, now yourself and the rest of the team. I'm going on a whole nother level, but I still get drawn when I see people suffering. And it's about the the financial is the one side. They could use mm -hmm. a little extra money. Who can't? But the other is about their perspective on life and I always feel like the five that I'm surrounding myself with are, are normally the ones that are on the worst possible place <laughs> in their lives because I want to help them to get over and that's where I'm just kind of yeah I, I ask I have to work on it myself and see what it is because a lot of times you help them mm. but no matter what they get for help they go when they don't train and gain the knowledge they go right back you could give them a yeah. million and in a year they got a million in debt so i'm just wondering how people feel about that is is that also a common thing or is it just me like the mother Teresa, trying to help everyone and i'm still looking for myself as well yeah well rocky i would say um you actually can't help other people um it's frustrating. I wish I could inject people, get a vaccine for these principles, but you can't. Mm -hmm. So uh, what's happening, if, if he is ready to say, okay, what's gone is not good enough. What do I need to do? So that's the ultimate asking that question again. What do I need to know? What do I need to do? And be prepared to take different action to create new experiences that can now create new information in the mind. And the reason why people go back to where they were is because they haven't done the subconscious mind work. Mm -hmm. uh, and the reason why that's a meditation image is because that's where the subconscious mind is. So sitting quietly, people talk about meditation a lot and it is so powerful. But to just have that time to quieten the mind, stop feeding it the fear and the doubt and the worry, just stop it and then let it be at peace. And then it can gather its new thoughts 
and start to move on. And that's why this is the higher level thinking, because most people, sadly, don't stay in the game long enough of changing their life to get to this level. But, you know, if there's anything I can do to help you, though, Rocky, and help your team, then just private message me and we'll see what we can do. Will do, Janet. Thank you so much. Thank you. I think, Janet, I mean, that's a, a, a perfect example of that is, you know, when you look at the majority of people who win the lottery mm. and the statistics are horrifying because uh, 95% end up within three to five years broke or worse off than they were before mm. they won the lottery. And that's mm. because they haven't got the mental capacity and they self-sabotage again. So it's vitally yeah. important that we grow the mind. And, you know, the old adage you can't help someone get out of the ditch until you get out of it yourself. Mm. And, and I know, uh, Rocky, you're 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 such a giving soul, but you know, it, 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 we can't help everyone. Um, but this sort of stuff can help people to change themselves. Yeah. And it, it it is like a you know a dripping tap uh, on a stone. It will shape over time, um, but it's not going to do it instantly. And it, and it's really just it's when you're opening your mind that you you can start the process because every little bit can make a difference. Yeah. Now, just going back to the lottery winning there, it's not really a surprise, those statistics, when you think about it, because, again, refer, with reference to my book, and I cite this 97% of the population are in the poverty mindset. So poverty mindset is not about money. A rich mindset is not about money. Money is a byproduct of how we think. If we have a poor mindset, the byproduct of money there is debt, or it's also a really accumulated bank balance, but with fear of spending it. What's the point of having loads of money if you're afraid of spending it? So, so there's still poverty. You know, you can be a poor millionaire, which is why I love happiness millionaire. So we... Um, you know, the, the wealth is in here. And if somebody gets all these millions, no matter how many millions you get, if you haven't cultivated this wealth, you'll lose those millions or you'll be afraid to spend them, one or, one or the two. Yeah. Um, but I, I was just looking, we did get a message from Derek and he's, he said he just wanted to talk about um, page 217, building a new model. I believe I've got a quote in my book. It says, never change things by fighting existing reality. So in other words, you know, put down your weapons, open up, open up your mind, open up your heart and stop fighting and look to fall forward as uh, gorgeous Denzel Washington was talking about. <laughs> Thank you for that, Brian. <laughs> I have yeah. a question, uh, sorry. Sorry about Go that. ahead, Alan. And it's just, I don't know if anyone knows it on this call because it's been coming up in my mind a little bit and it's about, the, it's about winning the lottery thing. So obviously we've heard about people who have won the lottery and then lost all the money because they didn't have that rich mindset. But what kind of, I ask myself is how did they win it in the first place if they weren't a vibrational match to it? So that's, that's what I do. I don't know the answer and I, I'd like to know, but how did they win the lottery in the first place? And then, do you get what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? I find that that's a brilliant question. And what's coming to my mind is the faith right at the beginning. You know, when you've got the, the faith image talks about fear and faith, and they're the two sides of the same coin. We all have them. A lot of people, they do the lottery out of fear of not having enough money. So they're gambling in order to try to get this more money because they, they don't have faith in themselves. They don't believe in themselves that they can create their own wealth. So they actually do the lottery out of fear. But then there are some people who are perfectly happy, perfectly wealthy. They do the lottery because somehow there's, there was one woman and she had this sixth sense um, I can't remember, it's a few years ago now. Maybe other people on this call remember it. I think she'd just been given the all clear of breast cancer. And she just had this intuitive sense to do the lottery. 
but she couldn't get to do it. So she got, I think, her husband or a daughter or somebody, just go and put some money on the lottery. You know, these are the numbers. Just put it on the lottery. And she won it. And But she knew she was going to win it. Yes. Now, she wouldn't have lost all that. I haven't followed the story, but I... I would put everything I have that that woman has not lost all that money and that she's done good with that money mm. because she didn't do it out of fear. Yeah, yeah. So I think the 97% of people who lose the money from the lottery, they're the ones, they're doing it from a state of fear and yeah. they can't live with it because they haven't dealt with the fear. And so the money would disappear. So you can still you can still attract things in a fear base, but it doesn't last. Oh long. yeah, exactly. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah. You are you're always attracting. Again, I I once on a Facebook post many years ago, I saw this woman saying, you know, the law of attraction doesn't work for everybody. And I this is in my book as well because this mm -hmm. comment just really surprised me. And because she was claiming to be this law of attraction queen or whatever. It's always and I'm like, it's always <laughs> one. Eh? And I just thought that's nonsense. The law of attraction works for everybody. Yeah. But it it what she means is the shiny car doesn't work for anybody. <laughs> everyone the the lottery win doesn't work for everybody. But law of attraction is working. What you're thinking about is coming straight back at you there's um oh there's a lovely poem in my book that i happen to have on my mouse mat here and i'll read to you it's by ella wheeler wilcox it says you never can tell you never can tell what a thought will do in bringing you hate or love for thoughts are things and their airy wings are swifter than carrier doves they follow the law of the universe. Each thing creates its kind and they speed all the track to bring you back whatever went out from your mind. Legal. Boom. boom. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, very, very good. good. Yeah, thanks for that yeah, anyway. That, that, that answers the question. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm just looking. Da -da 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 -da. Excellent. Anybody else, any thoughts or want to share anything in this great conversation? Just unmute yourself if you want to say anything. I can't always see. Oh, I yeah. see Ruth has a hand up. It, Ruth, if you have a question, just unmute your mic. Hello, uh, Joe here. Can, can I say something? Yes, yeah. hi, Joe. Please, Joe, go ahead. I, I, I believe that what you think and what you speak is what you seek. So if you think negative, you speak negative, you'll get negativity. If you think positive, you speak positive, you get positivity. Yep. So give me an example. A lot of people, and I don't care what you think here, uh, the reason they're running about thinking negative and all this, they're watching rubbish on TV. Uh -huh. And it's been, been filled into their minds. To give you an example of how I... Last week, I, I'm not, don't follow TV, but last week, Prince Philip died. And there was a complaint to the BBC because they missed Master Chef on some East Enders or something. 100,000 complaints. And I thought to myself, people are not living in reality. They're living in this mm. thing. So very careful what you put into your mind. Mm. What do you think? And what you speak is what you get. If you if you think positive and you speak positive, you'll get positivity. That's the way I look at it. Yeah, I I like to call this helpful and unhelpful, as opposed to what's positive and negative. Because what might be positive for you could be negative for me, and all that, and vice versa. So if we look at our thoughts, helpful or unhelpful, are those thoughts helpful and getting us to that very first principle of desire? Is this TV program helpful to me? Is it making me feel angry? If it is, turn it off. But if it makes you feel angry and then it draws you to take an action that has this, you know, helpful result, then keep watching the program. I think life is, is very, it's complex, but simple at the same time. We're all on unique individual journeys. We all learn very unique and individual things. But if we can have create our mind focusing on our own personal desire and reality, then we can, you know, use that to create a beautiful 
rich life that then goes on to benefit others. And then that has an influence on others also. But I agree with you with TV. I've actually just got rid of mine and uh, I'm loving not having it. <laughs> I think I Celestine... I Celestine wanted to say something the... about the TV. Hi, and like many Hi, and thank you all for every bit of your peace of mind put here into those little tiny windows in that connection. Uh, about TV, I learned long, long time ago and um, about the energy. It's like electronic energy. I'm not talking about like energy that cannot be measured. Yeah. <laughs> so I learned about how much uh, that people like the TVs in their bedroom. And even though the TV is turned off, but they don't have very comfortable uh, sleeping or they're very comforting sleeping. So since the 80s that I learned this about TVs and uh, you name it in the kitchen and other items, I said, no, 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 we don't need disturb this disturbance from the outside. We have plenty of it in the inside. And then meantime, working on the brain and on the thoughts and on the actions and on the reaching and receiving, same time, is cleaning your environment. Yes. Because yes. sometimes it really, like you can be working up and then something in the environment could be draining you, something yes. like that. So it's, uh, it's lovely to, to really be aware and conscious about us and around us. Yeah, great. Yeah. Thanks, Ella. I, I think you're right. This, everything we've spoken about in these last five weeks is about conscious living. You know, be aware of everything. Be aware of your relationships, your personal ones, your business ones. Be aware of, you know, what, um, what your income means to you. You know, some people, they chase these millions. Well, actually, it's a huge responsibility having millions. What about having the amount of you know, money income that gives you joy and peace and then expand from there. If you wish to expand financially, you might just go, do you know what? Actually, I am loving life. And isn't that what we're here for in the first place? You know? So, I yeah, I love this. We're getting some great comments in the, um, in the chat box here. I hope you're taking time just to have a read through it. There's loads. I can't By the say. way, if anybody wants to save the chat, please just go to the three little dots beside file, click on that, and it will allow you to download the chat so right. uh, you can save it to your yeah. computer. Um, I, I, I have a little mantra that uh, there's there's great psychology, and Wilfred knows, uh, Wilfred may remember this, because it was a, uh, a networking friend of ours at a, uh, an event in Canada, that, or sorry, no, in Colorado that we were at, in 1997, I believe, and I borrowed this from a, a very flamboyant and uh, prolific networker, and that is, if you're not optimistic, you get misty optics. I think there's <laughs> like brilliant that. psychology in that, you know? Yeah. If you're not optimistic, you get misty optics. So there you go. I like that. I like that. We need optimism, don't we? Absolutely. Optimism so, uh, is good. Absolutely fantastic afternoon. Uh, yeah. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Next week will be the, the final week, and we'll have more audience participation. Remember, if you want a little uh, deck of cards for the Happiness Millionaire cards, vision cards, please send the email to me with your uh, details and uh, address. And the PayPal uh, address is just my email, Brian Chicks. Uh, Brian, and you you can put that into the uh, into the WhatsApp group as well, couldn't you? Your I'll put it into the email. Telegram group, and uh, we've actually got the um, the Telegram group link <laughs> in the chat there. If everybody is to get it, yeah. please join the Telegram group. Welcome to the Telegram. Somebody <laughs> wanting to say something? Yeah, yeah. Julia. Hello. Okay. I think it's <laughs> without <laughs> notice. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like Nana. <laughs> Sorry, Janet, I just muted everybody there because that was a bit uh, off-putting. Um, so yeah, please, uh, I'll put it in the chat and I'll put it in the Telegram group with the details for uh, the link for the cards. Okay. Awesome. See you guys all next week. Have a lovely Sunday. I'm off to enjoy the sunshine.
Have Enjoy. a super week, everybody. Thank, Thank you, you, Brian. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you, Brian. A blessed day. Bye. Thank you. And my love and kisses to all. Ciao. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. God bless.